Thank you, for, first of all, uh, for having me invited to come to uh, Rome uh, for this opportunity here. And I uh, would like to thank the organizers for that. Uh, Rome is a superb town, and I'm al always very happy to come and uh, uh, speak about what, what my main interest is uh, here in Rome. So uh, you can see and think on the... Yes, uh, you, you see my pedigree uh, <laughs> over there. And uh, we, uh, uh, the title of my, uh, my talk is uh, Over One Million UE Citizens Voice Their Support to Human Health Issues by Signing the EC Stop uh, VV Section. Now, uh, many of you, if not all, have signed last year this uh, e uh, European um, uh, Citizen Initiative Stop VV Section. I think among the 1.2 million uh, people who signed in, uh, many uh, did so because they support uh, the uh, uh, animal welfare organization. Now, this is very important, and uh, we acknowledge uh, the, the courage of these people to having signed in, but uh, there are much more in important issues of animal experimentation than just animal welfare. And the much more important issue is human health. Uh, in uh, 1986, uh, there was an initiative uh, uh, launched by the European Commission, the 86609 Directive, which says, if you can have the next slide. Uh, in uh, Article 7 of this, uh, of this uh, Council uh, Directive 86609, uh, experiments shall not be performed if another scientifically uh, satisfactory method is reasonably and practically available. We were not too much happy about this, but still it was a good progress since if we can propose an alternative to animal experimentation based on scientific, on scientific reasons, uh, they should, be, should have been adopted immediately. So the, the people who signed this uh, 90, uh, 2013 initiative were just unhappy. Next slide, please. Uh, because uh, meanwhile, in 2010, uh, the Directive 2010 uh, uh, modified considerably the, 2000, the, the 80, 89, uh, 86, uh, 609 uh, alternative in that the responsibility for um, not choosing uh, animal experimentation uh, instead of uh, uh, satisfactory uh, 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 scientific uh, methods uh, is left to the uh, member states, not to the Euro European Commission, to the member states. This made quite a difference because uh, among the 27 or 28 uh, members of the European Union, some may have been, uh, may have accepted to have animal experimentation on their, uh, in, in, their, in their country, and so uh, one could have exp uh, escaped very easily this, uh, this uh, rule uh, this, uh, of animal experimentation being suppressed. Now, uh, of course, people are very happy with this, and uh, so are we. Uh, Antidote Europe is an association which is mainly devoted to uh, human health issues, and from this point of view, uh, relying on uh, animals for testing and, and for, for, for trying testing toxicities and for trying also uh, to improve human health by developing new uh, therapies uh, was of course not very uh, uh, very well uh, warranted by this kind of uh, directive. That's the reason why we also oppose this directive, but not on ethical grounds, but on just on human health issue uh, 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 problems. And to illustrate this point, uh, uh, I will just show you a few slides which uh, show that indeed we are going to face very strong uh, problems uh, concerning our health. You know that we are exposed to about, uh, better this way, <laughs> uh, you know that we are exposed to about 200,000 chemicals, man-made chemicals uh, in our environment and, and even in our plates. Uh, and uh, we have to know what uh, the effect of these chemicals on our health is. Now, uh, in um, almost all cases, if, even if uh, already the 
chemical has been tested. In almost all cases, it has been tested. It has been tested in animals, mainly in rodents, rats, and mice. Now, this is not satisfactory. If we look at the, evolu at the, the, the trend of uh, adverse health effects over the past uh, 10 years. Next slide, please. Here you see uh, the evolution of uh, diabetes, diabetes type 2 in the, in the French population. The data have been recovered from um, uh, official health uh, control agencies in France. I think you must have equivalent here in, in, in Italy. And uh, the same is true in, in England, in UK, and in the United States with the CDC, uh, which, uh, who publish uh, in a regular interval uh, the evolution of uh, um, well, important uh, health issues in the popula in their population. Now here you see that diabetes in France between 2000 and 2009 has almost doubled. The number of people concerned by this has, has almost doubled. The same is true, next slide please. The same is true if you look at the incidence of uh, cancer, prostate cancer in France. Now we have here the figures since uh, uh, 1980 to 2000, 2005. You see that up to 1999.90, uh, well, it was a, a slight increase, ne nevertheless significant. But starting at uh, uh, between 1990 uh, and 2000, we have a, a very sudden and steep increase of the number of uh, uh, prostate cancers being uh, 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 diagnosed in, in French men uh, every year. These are incidence data that this the number of people being uh, diagnosed with a, with a disease uh, in a given year. Not to be confused with, uh, with uh, uh, prevalence. I come back to this later. Next slide, please. Here's a, a breast cancer uh, incidence in France. You see that among um, uh, one million uh, uh, women in France, there is a steep increase of the number of uh, uh, cases being diagnosed with, uh, with uh, 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 breast cancer uh, between uh, 1980, 1985, and 2005. Again, the number of people being concerned, of women being concerned by this disease, has almost doubled uh, in the past 10 years. Next slide, please. Alzheimer's disease, uh, it's a disease which usually um, uh, is uh, diagnosed in people over 65 years of age. Uh, so we have here uh, not data uh, uh, for the 2000, uh, 2000 or 2010 because these data are just not published. Uh, so we have to rely on uh, evaluation we have been made by the uh, parliamentary office uh, in the, to control uh, the health, uh, the health uh, politics in, in France. And you see that we have had uh, in 2010 about 5 percent of people over age 65 which, have, uh, which are concerned by Alzheimer's disease. Uh, today, this represents about 650,000 people being concerned by this, uh, by this disease. Next slide, please. Uh, autists. Autism is not a disease. It is a, a defect in development of a neural system uh, in, in young, young babies uh, occurring uh, often before uh, birth but which can uh, still uh, develop uh, in the two or three years following birth. And you see again that between 70 and 85, we had about uh, one uh, autistic uh, uh, baby being born uh, in 1985 uh, out of 5,000 births, whereas in 2010, we have one in 120 births. So we have an increase about 50-fold between uh, in, in these uh, 15, 15 years, uh, 15 or 50 years, 55 years, 50, 50. So uh, this is, again, this is very intriguing because um, uh, autism is not a disease, cannot be cured. It's a, it's a defect in development which cannot be recovered later, uh, even uh, if uh, there is progress, uh, <coughs> medical progress. So if we take all these data together, and to look at the incidence, this is the number of uh, people having been diagnosed, diagnosed, diagnosed uh, in a given year. In the year 2000, we had for diabetes 2, 1.4, uh, 140,000 people 
being diagnosed with diabetes 2. Alzheimer, 190,000. Cancer, breast cancer, 20,000. Prostate cancer, 18,000. Autism, 160. Uh, so all in all, it's uh, 300, almost 370,000 people being di diagnosed in 2000 with these diseases. If you go to 2009, for diabetes, uh, 210,000. It's almost uh, doubled, but close to. Alzheimer, uh, 316,000. Breast cancer, 49,000. Prostate cancer, 97,000. Autism, 8,000. So all in all, 680. Thousand people being diagnosed uh, in 2009 with these rather serious diseases or uh, development uh, problems. If we go now to prevalence, this is the number of people living a given year. Whether the, the disease has been diagnosed during this year or in the previous years, diabetes type 2, 1.5 million in 2000, Alzheimer's, 500,000. Breast cancer, 470,000. Prostate cancer, 330,000. Autism, 1,800. Uh, 1, so all in all, 2,800,000 people diagnosed uh, be living with these diseases in 2000. In 2009, we have uh, 3.2 people being uh, uh, affected by diabetes type 2. 850,000 with Alzheimer's. Uh, 900,000 ladies, uh, women with uh, breast cancer, uh, 1 million men uh, with uh, prostate cancer, and autism has scored up, stored up to 650,000. So all in all, we have close to 6 million people uh, suffering of these diseases in 2009, whether it has been diagnosed in 2009 or pre in previous years. So you see that the trend is quite impressive, and uh, I am... Uh, naturally uh, rather optimistic that like seeing these kind of figures, just taking data which have been published by or, uh, official organisms in France, uh, no uh, other uh, manipulation of these data, you see that we are going to hurt uh, very, very strongly the human health in, 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 in France, and I think in, in Italy uh, things are quite similar. Next slide, please. If prevention is not improving very significantly over the next uh, years uh, and as soon as possible, what would be the future for our children born since 2000 when they will in their best years, that is between 40 and 60 and 50 years? So for this, to, to try to forecast this kind of uh, evolution, we just ask the computer to extrapolate the data I've just shown you uh, to see what's going to happen in the next few decades. Next slide, please. The prevalence of uh, diabetes. You see, uh, by 2050, 40% of people over age 65, uh, 50 will be affected with uh, diabetes type 2. Almost half of the population of uh, those uh, being born since 2000. Next slide, please. Breast cancer. About f uh, 5,000 out of uh, a million uh, women, 5,000 of this, uh, uh, 5 out in, in, in 1,000 will be concerned by, uh, by uh, breast cancer. Just in the year 2050, that is, every year uh, uh, will uh, increase this number uh, in an equivalent way, so that uh, almost no lady can escape uh, breast cancer when they arrive at the age of, uh, of uh, 50 or 60. Uh, when born uh, since, uh, 2000, uh, since 2000. Uh, that's quite uh, impressive. It's, the situation is even worse. Next slide, please. For, pre for, for prostate cancer, if we have uh, in 2050, according to this, there would be six men out in 100 being diagnosed with, with uh, uh, prostate cancer. That is, almost everybody, every man, will be concerned by this disease by 2050. Next slide, please. Number of autistic people. So I, sh I show here uh, the little uh, image, uh, which is uh, just uh, the same as I showed earlier about the evolution of, uh, of uh, autistic uh, cases in, in, uh, in, uh, in France. Now, you see that if we extrapolate this to the year two 2050, there will be 300 uh, uh, autistic uh, people, babies, being uh, uh, 
uh, worth of the earth's sleep payable by uh, out of, uh, of, uh, of uh, 1,000. That is, one out of three uh, will be autistic. That's uh, terrific because there is no chance to escape this kind of disease once you have it uh, on board. Next slide, uh, just for the prevalence of Alzheimer's disease, was age uh, over 65, 24% of uh, people born since uh, 2000 may be affected by Alzheimer by the year 2070. That is, almost nobody ca can ex escape whether uh, it is diabetes, uh, Alzheimer, uh, uh, autism, of course. And uh, even uh, if you look at the next, uh, next picture, please, uh, the m male fertility is going down uh, constantly since about f uh, 40 or 50 years, and we are going to reach a fertility limit, men fertility limit, by 2024, uh, fertility limit which is uh, uh, assessed by OMS, uh, Organi World Organization of, uh, of Health, to be 40 uh, million uh, uh, spermatozoid per, per milliliter of sperm, which, uh, a figure which will be reached by 2024. Already today, uh, one out of seven couple need uh, assistance, medical assistance for procreation. And uh, by 2024, if uh, this trend goes on uh, to, this, uh, to this date, uh, the next uh, 10 years, uh, eh bien, uh, everybody will be, uh, every couple will be uh, 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 we have to consider uh, medical assistance for procreation. Now, seeing all these figures, next, next slide, please. Um, it's in, in French, I'm going to translate. Uh, if uh, for children uh, born since 2000, when they were reach uh, the, 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 the best years, uh, the best of their years, at this age of 40, 50, or 60, one out of three will be diabetic. One, five, one out of five will suffer Alzheimer. One uh, woman out of three will be concerned by breast cancer. No man will uh, escape prostate cancer. Uh, one, uh, one birth out of three will be autistic. And fer ma male fertility, fertility will be completely lost. So you see, these, uh, these uh, figures are quite impressive. And we have, by all means, tried to stop this uh, uh, bad uh, trend. Uh, uh, next slide, please. Uh, 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 we have to make a very serious prevention. Presently, uh, prevention is mainly left to animal models, as I said earlier, uh, mainly um, uh, rodents, rats and mice. We are not uh, mice or rodents of uh, si uh, 75 kilograms. Uh, we are humans and we have nothing to do uh, biologically with these animals. So we have to switch over to rel reliable prevention if we want these curves to be uh, uh, well, modified and uh, have a better issue uh, concerning uh, human health. Next slide, please. Um, in, 90, uh, in 2016, we, uh, in 2006, sorry, we were the first organization in Europe developing toxicogenomics, which is, I come back to this uh, later uh, to, to explain what it is, uh, this looks like. And uh, we went to, to the European um, uh, Parliament in, in Brussels and uh, told the members that there is now a, a new way to, uh, to uh, assess toxic risks using uh, toxicogenomics, which is uh, assessing to, uh, toxic risks on human cells in culture uh, with methods we're going to explain you later, uh, which are quite relevant, uh, are very fast and very, uh, not very expensive, and of course no animal uh, concerned in this. In this. So we went to, to Brussels and asked uh, these people to consider uh, uh, toxic genomics uh, in, the, in the frame of the REACH project. Uh, by that time, it was about to be voted by the European Parliament, and we had the agreement of the European Parliament. Yes, of course, toxic genomics is a, is a good method, and we are going to introduce it uh, in the REACH project, as shown on this uh, slide here. Now. Uh, we, uh, we are quite uh, certain that uh, this will be accepted uh, by the European Commission because of the Directive 26609 saying that if there is uh, an alternative to animal experimentation, it must be uh, accepted. So that's the reason uh, why we were not very happy with uh, the modification of 86609 uh, to uh, the 2010 uh, uh, 63 uh, 
which leaves to the to the popula to the, to the individual uh, uh, states uh, the possibility or not uh, to uh, use animal experimentation. Next slide, please. So uh, toxicogenomics is a, a method which uh, is based on uh, human cells in culture. We have some 250,000 different, 250, sorry, uh, different cell types in our organism, normal cells, uh, 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 well, all kinds of uh, uh, heart, uh, uh, cardiac, cardiac cells, um, uh, any kind of uh, cell, and we know uh, how to culture all these cells. So we can expose very simply these cells to a given chemical and try to see how the cells are going to react once the, they are exposed to the chemical. Now, toxicogenomics is precisely a, a method which allows us to, uh, to, 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 to be present inside the, 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 the cell and to see what uh, the chemical is going to change in the genes which are expressed uh, because of the exposure to this, uh, to this chemical. Now, uh, some, some uh, of the, of the uh, genes are stimulated by the, the product. Uh, some of the genes are uh, uh, repressed because of the, of the uh, chemical, and others still are not, uh, not concerned at all. So, next slide, please. Now, toxicogenomics uh, is a reliable toxic risk assessment. It takes advantage on the human cell culture and uh, genomics. It is gender, age, and ethnic-specific assessment. That is, we can uh, indeed test if whether a chemical is uh, uh, of concern to uh, male, to, fe to female, uh, to elder people, to young people, to babies, etc., uh, and to different ethnicities. Uh, the method is 100 times uh, faster uh, than, uh, and 100 times less expensive than animal experimentation, and the principle is, uh, as I said, very simple. So if I have the next slide, please. You have a typical example of a toxicogenomics uh, experiment. Here you have a series of spots of different color. Uh, this, each spot corresponds to a certain gene of uh, uh, we know in our genome. And we can see the, gene, the, the, the genes which are in red have been stimulated by the product which, uh, to which the cell has been exposed, whereas the, the, the genes which have been repressed are in blue and uh, those be between uh, blue and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, red, that is uh, yellow, green, etc., uh, have are of intermediate uh, stimulation by the product. Now, knowing precisely uh, the genetic, uh, the, the biological influence of these genes on human health, we can forecast from this kind of uh, experiment uh, if the cell is going to uh, be, uh, to take uh, pathways uh, to certain diseases like cancer, like uh, what's called conformational diseases, uh, like uh, uh, Alzheimer and, uh, and uh, uh, diabetes, uh, or if there is an influence on the development, especially the neural development of babies, may be responsible for uh, autism and other uh, diseases which affect uh, uh, young people. So uh, this, uh, we can read, like in a, in a newspaper, we can read precisely what the community is going to do when the, the, once uh, the person has been exposed to this, uh, to this uh, uh, product. Next slide, please. Just a, a, a short example. Bisphenol A, which is a molecule which uh, everybody here in this room uh, will have in his organism bisphenol A because it is very common and uh, you can find it uh, uh, very easily uh, not only in, in plastics but also in, in paints, in, in paintings, uh, in um, wrapping of, uh, of uh, uh, food, etc. Now, uh, bisphenol A is a very simple molecule which has been developed uh, about uh, 130 years ago uh, because it is an analog of hormones. It was uh, soon recognized that it's not very strong, and some modification of this molecule were much better at uh, hormone. And uh, one of these uh, molecules uh, called diethyl stilvestron, which may be uh, to the elder here uh, of some, uh, some uh, interest because it has been given to ladies which had, uh, who had uh, difficulties for um, uh, waiting for a baby, either they were not, not fertile or 
they had problems during the pregnancy. And uh, this medical was given to ladies uh, to try to, to, to settle these kind of problems. And uh, uh, many of these uh, ladies gave birth to children, especially to, to young uh, girls, <coughs> which suffered uh, very severe uh, problems uh, once uh, in, in adulthood. In adulthood. Uh, for instance, infertility, obesity, uh, prone for uh, breast cancer, etc. So this product is uh, quite similar to the, the bisphenol A, which I just showed you, and has been uh, uh, withdrawn from the market because of these uh, uh, secondary effects. Now, uh, if we look uh, by toxicogenomics into this, uh, into this uh, molecule, uh, next slide, please. Uh, B uh, BPA, bisphenol A, uh, is mimicking hormones. That is, it gives rise to uh, uh, early puberty, puberty in girls. Uh, it per perturbates uh, secondary sexual uh, characteristics in, in males. Uh, it, it is uh, diminishing fertility. So as uh, so seen earlier, uh, the uh, male fertility is going down and bisphenol A may be one of the culprits. Bisphenol A affects the development of neural, of the neural development of the fetus. So uh, if uh, we uh, ask uh, why there is so increase of autism, well, the answer is uh, part of the answer at least is here. DPA induces conformational uh, diseases, Alzheimer, diabetes, Parkinson, uh, Huntington disease, uh, and we have uh, seen this uh, using toxicogenomics very simply. Uh, it is cancerogenic. Uh, since it mimics uh, the effect of hormones, it is cancerogenic, especially for uh, cancer de depending on hormones like breast and prostate cancer. It is neurotoxic, that is, it gives uh, rise to aggressivity, to anxiety, affects appetite, um, the, the, uh, the learning is uh, impaired, and uh, the, compre the comprehension and the memory is also impaired by this product. So uh, BPA is a very, very uh, dangerous product in our environment, and as I said earlier, uh, every, everybody here in this room will have a BPA in, uh, in its organism. Next slide, please. So uh, you want to, uh, things to change, then hurry up. The easy stop view section is a timely opportunity to get animals out of facilities active in human health issues. Risk assessment, toxic risk assessment, and biomedical research. Look for the last, today we have no cure for most cancers, we have no cure for diabetes, we have no cure for Alzheimer's, we have no cure for, 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 for other diseases, and this is due to the fact that all this uh, research is carried out in animals and no animal is a model for human. Uh, uh, to convince authorities that they must at least, at last, take account of our and our children's health, which is not the case presently. If they don't react, they may be suited for non-assistance to endangered persons and passive homicide. Okay, thank you for your attention, and if you have some questions, please, uh, I would be happy to answer.